Cardano architecture could be compared to cake. No, it's not sweet and delicious. It consists of different layers, each of which providing different functionality to the underlying protocol. These layers have a distinct function, and in this lesson, we'll go into what they are and how they work together. So how does Cardano work? The Cardano architecture features three layers, a consensus layer, a ledger layer, and a network layer. Let's look at the consensus layer. This layer performs two fundamental functions, the first of which is running the Ouroboros consensus protocol. This layer takes decisions like adopting blocks, choosing between competing chains, if there are any, and decides whether to produce blocks of its own. And the second is to maintain all of the state that is required to make the decisions taken in the consensus layer. Next, we have the ledger layer. This layer specifies what the state of the ledger looks like, how the ledger must be updated for each new block, and the ledger layer consists exclusively of pure functions that specify the transitions between successive ledger states using the extended UTXO accounting model. The state transitions are driven by a set of transactions contained within the Cardano blocks and by major events such as epoch boundary transitions and hard fork combinator events. Cardano's hard fork combinator is a revolutionary feature of the blockchain, which allows the protocol to make upgrades without creating a separate Cardano chain. An example of this would be something like Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. More details on the hard fork combinator will be shared in a future lesson. And lastly, we have the networking layer. This layer maintains the connections between all of the distributed nodes in the Cardano network, obtains new blocks from the network as they are produced by block producing nodes, builds newly minted transactions into blocks and transmits blocks between nodes. A term that is often used when talking about blockchains is decentralization. Let's take a look at decentralization a little bit more. Decentralization is one of Cardano's main drivers built around three central pillars, block production and consensus, networking, and governance. These three elements combined form a fully decentralized environment where power shifts from monopolistic entities to the individual. Decentralization dissolves the concentration of power by enabling peers to make choices and decisions and returning ownership of personal information where it belongs, with the users. On March 31st of 2001, Cardano's block production became fully decentralized, on that day, the stake pool operator or SPO community began producing 100% of new blocks. This was an important milestone on the way to Cardano's ultimate destination, the creation of a platform wholly and democratically operated and controlled through a global community of SPOs, developers, and ADA holders. The D or decentralization parameter was removed with the Vasil hard fork combinator event, which makes the network irreversibly decentralized. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Another great way to help support the creation of this content is to delegate to Kaizen Stake Pools. Join us for our next episode of the Cardano 101 course, where we'll discuss Ouroboros and Cardano's provably secure proof of stake protocol. I'll see you there.